All right. Hello. Looks like you all are coming in. Welcome. Good to see you all. Yeah. I'm gonna, I am going to wait till we got some more in here and that way we get all the excitement with everyone in here. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Let <laughs> us know where you're tuning in from. We are, well, I'm currently in Southern California in LA <laughs> and Sam is in a much cooler climate. <laughs> much cooler climate. I'm in New Jersey at the moment, uh, yep. visiting some family while we wait for our brand new office to be ready That's right. for us to move in. So yeah, normally we would be doing this together. Wow. We have lots of Canada <laughs> Ooh, ooh. Yeah, all over. <laughs> lots of see people some, are cold. <laughs> Michigan. Glad to uh, see some Michigan reps out here as well. Oh, yes. Oh, Romania. Wow. Wow. Very oh, cool. Nice. Very exciting. South Africa. We got, oh, Philippines. It's 1.30 in the morning over there. Wow. Wow. You must be excited about this new feature, as excited as we are. <laughs> I tell you, we are very excited to yes. uh, to be talking about this. So I'm just going to give it just a few more seconds before we get started here, just so that we don't have to repeat anything or recover all the housekeeping stuff. I also want to make sure that we don't hit our attendee limit. I know this is a very exciting webinar, so I've got my thing over here in case I need to increase the attendee limit for that, which is very exciting. Uh, I've only had to do that a couple of times for our more exciting <laughs> webinars. So this will be really, really cool. And I am excited to dive in to this. All right. Getting my screen all situated here and we will go away. All right. So just a few housekeeping items here. We This webinar will be recorded. And don't worry if you have to tune out or if you have to leave or if you notice that someone comes late and they're asking questions if this webinar is recorded. This is where you can help us and you can let them know in the chat that a recording will be emailed within 24 hours of the webinar. So you will get that in all its glory and be able to slow it down, zoom in, do whatever you want and watch this so that you know everything you need to know about this new feature that we're launching. Then at the end of the webinar, time willing, and I, I think we will have time, we will do a live Q&A. So if you have any questions that you'd like answered, place them instead of the chat box where you all are, are chatting with your, your cities and where you're located, which is perfect. Instead of putting your questions in the chat box, box, put them in the Q&A section. There's a little button up there that lets you switch to the Q&A and it allows you to ask your questions. That way we can filter through them a little bit easier. Of course, if you're excited or if you want to just share something with us, that's not necessarily a question. You're more than welcome to put that in the chat, bo chat box. It's kind of fun to see that go as we're going along. So I am going to go ahead and get started here. You ready, Sam? I'm ready. <laughs> <Let's do that. laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. In case you don't know, my name is Becca, and I am the founder and CEO of Dubzato. And here with me, I have Sam, Dubzato's product manager. And Sam and I love all of the things, new features and updates. But it's not just us that's working on all of these updates. So much love and so much time gets put into making Dubzato what it is. And I want to give you a, just a tad bit of the behind the scenes of what makes a feature here at Dubsado. So Sam and I usually get together and we work closely to plan out our roadmap and little updates and improvements to the platform. We have lots of fun in those meetings and it's also lots of brain power gets put into that. Then after Sam and I plan the functionality out, get all the documentation that Sam works on, we hand it off to the rest of our product team. So our UI, UX, our, our writer for the platform to plan the look and the text within the platform for that feature. Once we're done, we ship that off to the devs for our favorite part to bring it to life. And we're making it sound super duper simple right now but it's not. There are so many little facets and so much love and so much time put in by so many people here at Dubsado. So lots of love gets, whoa, sorry, my phone fell. Lots of love gets poured into all of these features at Dubsado. And that's why we get extra, extra excited whenever we have an update or a new feature to add into Dubsado. 
So Sam and I, as we get excited for these things, we thought, why not bring the celebrations to you all as well and have you share in this excitement? So we thought of our first ever feature premiere event, and that is what you all are attending here right now. Um, so this is our very first feature premiere event. This is something that we're going to make it a habit of with bigger feature releases. So in these live keynotes, like here right now, our team will be able to announce and walk you through all of the new feature releases so that you're educated, you know what's going on as soon as the feature lands in your account. And after these special events, you'll have a better understanding of whatever feature that is that we'll be launching and announcing that day. So are you ready to dive into what today's feature is? I'm sure you all know by now since you signed up for the webinar, and that is our auto pay on payment plans, something that so many of you have been asking for so long. So this is a very, very highly requested feature. It brings auto pay functionality to payment plans on one-time invoices. So not recurring invoices, this is just those one-time invoices and you want that auto pay functionality set up. So your clients will now have the ability to enroll on automatic payments whenever paying an installment on an eligible invoice. So this includes any eligible one-time invoices even an invoice generated on a proposal, which I know was a really big ask for some of you, especially like coaches and all of you. So we'll get into that invoice eligibility here very, very soon. But a little bit of a reason why we developed it. Here at Dubsado, we've kind of made our last year, we started dipping into it in, the, in our upcoming year. Our goal is to make you get money quicker, faster, better, easier. So our goal with this specific feature is to help business owners collect more money on time with less involvement from your clients. So even with payment reminders that we already have right now, you all have told us that your clients would love to just set it and forget it when it comes to payments. They're busy. They don't have time to go in and check in on invoices, even though you send them a payment reminder every time. This feature works if it works for your business, you can now just set it and forget it. So this feature is perfect for people who have a predictable or standard invoicing process. So after you send an invoice to a client, you won't be changing that invoice. That's kind of the perfect situation for this. So if you are a photographer and you have a payment plan on that invoice, clients can go in and set up auto pay leading up to their big day, or say you are a coach wanting to set up, say, a six-month coaching package on an invoice, or you're a web designer with payments due at kind of specific check-in points that are kind of always the same, and you're not changing what the invoice looks like, this is the feature that works for you. This works for many different types of businesses, and we'll get into that and talk about the specifics and all of that uh, and can see how it works for your business. So... Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our product manager, Sam, and she's going to walk us through this feature and all that it entails. And at the end, again, if time allows, we'll have a Q&A session for anyone that has questions. Don't forget to put it in the little Q&A uh, section of the chat box. And if you are on our Facebook, feel free to drop the questions in the chat, and I'll be able to get to those after we run through our Q&A section. Um, and if, of course, any excitement, share it with us. We love we love seeing the excitement in the chat box. So I'm I am going to let Sam just take it away now. <laughs> Woohoo. Thanks, Becca. I'm so excited to share this feature with you guys. And like Becca said, this feature is going to be perfect for anyone who has a predictable, standardized invoicing process. So that means that once you send that invoice to a client, you are not going to be changing the invoice. Things are you know, really set up in advance. Um, and that's because we do have some protections in place to make sure um, clients are not going to encounter any surprise charges that they're not expecting. And that does mean that certain changes will cause auto pay to turn off. But we will cover those situations a little bit later in the demo. Um, first, let's talk about using auto pay on payment plans. How does this work? Um, so let me pull up some slides. Here we go. Um, Right. So the option to enroll in auto pay on an invoice with a payment plan for your clients, this is going to appear automatically. There's nothing you're going to have to do to set this up or turn this on. It's just going to work just like 
our auto pay on recurring invoices feature, how the client always has an option to enroll in auto pay on a recurring invoice. Same thing here, as long as the invoice is eligible, your client will go ahead and be able to enroll in auto pay on that payment plan. So what makes an invoice eligible? We have a few things here. First off, you've got to have two or more unpaid installments in the payment plan on the invoice. So we need more than one installment uh, that still needs to be paid for the client to set up their auto pay. Second is that all of the installments need to show a specific due date. So just we don't want to see any TBD due dates. If there are TBD due dates, uh, the auto pay option will not appear for your client. And that's just to make sure uh, that it won't have to be turned off later as those due dates are changing. So it doesn't matter what type of due dates you're using. You can put fixed dates. You can use relative dates um, according to the project date or the contract. Um, it just has to all be filled in by the time the invoice is going out to the client. And finally, um, in that payment plan, we just want to make sure there's no more than one overdue installment. And this is to prevent any um, unexpected charges for the client for back payments. We didn't want to run into any issues with that. So as long as no more than one installment in the plan is overdue, the client can enroll. And that means that even if their auto pay failed and they want to go back and re-enroll, they can still do that even if one of their payments uh, became overdue. So those are the invoice requirements. We also have just a couple requirements in terms of payments. Again, very similar to our auto pay on recurring invoices. So the payment requirements are that you have to have Stripe or Square connected to Dubsado. Those are the two payment processors that are compatible with this feature. Um, it does not work with PayPal, just like our other recurring uh, auto pay feature. Your client will need to click pay now for a specific installment on the invoice. And we'll show this a little more clearly in the demo. And finally, your client has to pay with credit card. So once they click pay now, they'll want to click pay with card if that's an option that they see. They might see that option if you also have PayPal connected or if you have Stripe um, with ACH. The ACH will not allow them to enroll in auto pay. So they have to be making the payment uh, via credit card. All right, so those are just kind of the um, you know, requirements for the invoice and what makes it eligible. But as long as all of that is in place, the option to enroll in auto pay will show up automatically when the client goes to make that payment on their invoice. And this feature, like Becca said, will work on any invoice with a payment plan, including invoices created by proposals. So that's one of our favorite parts of this feature. You can now allow auto pay to be started from a proposal invoice. Um, so we hope that really makes things easier for you. And also as well, in case it wasn't clear, um, the installments, they do not have to be the same amounts for each installment. It can be a different amount for each installment as long as those due dates are set up. So this will you know, work on a variety of invoices in a variety of situations. And now we're going to play a little demo for you so that you can see everything in action. All right, we've got an invoice set up here with a payment plan. Our payment plan has three installments and each installment has a specific due date already set up. So uh, this payment plan and invoice, they are ready to go for auto pay. Taking a look at the client view of the invoice, for the client to enroll, they just need to click pay now on an installment. Um, so they're probably gonna go to that first one there to make their first payment. They'll need to click pay with card and then fill in their billing information. So this is uh, an example with Stripe. We're pulling in as much as we can from the client profile. They just need to fill the rest in. Square looks largely the same put in that credit card. We've got a test card uh, we're filling in here. 
And then at the bottom, you've got the option to turn on the auto pay. So we have a nice big toggle, um, shouldn't be missed. And clicking set up auto pay will charge for the first payment and set up in the system to automatically charge their same card on the remaining due dates in the payment plan. So that is how easy it is for the client to set up auto pay. Let's head back to the project to take a look at the confirmation email that gets sent out. So in the emails tab, we'll see our auto pay enrollment confirmed email. This gets sent automatically to the client and it includes important information like the invoice number and the payment plan breakdown and a link to the invoice so that the client has a record of enrolling in auto pay and they have that information. So this email can't be turned off, but you can customize it. So under templates canned emails, you can go over to the edit templates dropdown. And the last three emails here all have to do with auto pay. We've got auto pay failed, auto pay canceled, and auto pay enrollment confirmed. So these are all automatic emails, but you can click on one to adjust it to your liking. So you can go ahead and you know update the text to better match your brand voice and make sure it looks how you want. The one thing we do recommend is that you try to keep the general idea of the email the same so that your client is getting the right information. Um, so just try to you know, make some tweaks where needed, but try to leave those smart fields in place so that the client can see things like the invoice number and the link to the invoice and the payment plan um, and that confirmation email. Um, but otherwise, go ahead and customize these to your liking. And finally, I want to talk through how the client can manage auto pay on their own invoice and some things you'll need to think about when interacting with that invoice after the client has enrolled. So back on the client view of the invoice, you'll see that the client can click change payment method if they need to update their credit card. This will look a little bit different whether you have Stripe or Square, but same thing happens. The client can update their payment method. This would only take effect for upcoming payments though. So um, it'll prevent auto pay from failing, but once auto pay has failed, the client would need to make another payment on the payment plan to re-enroll. And that option will only show up if the invoice is still eligible. The client does also have the option to turn off auto pay to make sure um, you know, we're compliant with giving the client um, control over their auto pay so they can turn that toggle off, but they will be warned about what will happen there. And there is an automatic notification that goes to both you and the client if they decide to cancel auto pay. Um, this notification can't be turned off on either end. It's very important, we feel, for you to be informed whenever this is happening. And of course, the client can always re-enroll in auto pay later as long as the invoice is still eligible. All right, let's go back to the project view of the invoice and talk about making changes. So you can see on this invoice that auto pay has been turned on by looking at this indicator right under the payment plan section. That's where you'll see whether auto pay is turned on for a specific invoice. Um, once the client has enrolled in auto pay, like we mentioned earlier on, that is going to um, cause certain changes you make to the invoice to turn off auto pay. And the reason for this is that uh, we really just want to make sure the clients are protected against any surprise charges that they weren't expecting. And, um, you know, make sure that the payment amounts that they agreed to when they enrolled stay the same as long as we're automatically charging their card. So with that, changes to the invoice that would alter the remaining balance, um, so like changing a quantity or in this example, we're changing a line item price. Um, when you go to make that change and apply it, we will show you this uh, little warning here that lets you know that this change will turn off auto pay. And you can decide whether or not you want to proceed. So we'll make sure that you're aware 
of what that change would do, and you can always cancel out if you don't want to. A good alternative would be to make a separate invoice if you need to add charges and you want the client to stay enrolled in auto pay. Um, but you can you know, also proceed with this change and the client will receive an email letting them know that the auto pay has been canceled on this invoice and they can you know, go back and re-enroll as long as the invoice is still eligible. So you'll see that warning anytime you make a change that would affect the remaining balance on the invoice or anytime you would change the payment due dates or amounts in the payment plan and that does extend to changing the project date if your payment plan is watching the project date to set the installment due dates um, so just good to be aware of again how changes um, will some changes will turn off auto pay other changes that don't affect those things will not turn off auto pay so if you have to fix something in the line item description you can definitely go in and make that adjustment and nothing will happen to the auto pay. So we'll always warn you when that's about to happen based on a change that you are making. All right, so that is our demo of auto pay on payment plans. We're super excited to share this feature with you. And now we can have some Q&A. All right, so there is our demo, and um, we definitely have time for some. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've already got some in the Q and A box right there. Of course, um, if you thought of anything else as the demo was going on, you can put that in the little Q and A box. Um, there were some that I already answered, but I left some that I think might be best explained to everyone in person because I saw those as a common thing that was happening. Um, so, Sam, if you and I just want to tackle those together and we can announce them out loud. Do you see Sam on there? Do you want to start with, I think if you push publish, it will show to everybody. Ah. And then I believe so. It's the first time I'm using this specific feature. They, okay. keep, they keep updating and it's nice. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, I see. We have to publish. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with, um, I kind of went back up to the top here. We'll start with Susanna's, um, if we publish that question, also finding my way around. <laughs> Susanna says, hi, thanks so much for adding auto pay to payment plans. Will we be able to require our clients to enroll in auto pay? At this time, Susanna, no, you will not. Uh, the client will have to choose to opt into auto pay at this time. However, um, as some of you will have seen, requiring auto pay enrollment is something that's on our roadmap. So we're really looking forward to adding this in. We thought this was a great first step to get this in place for payment plans so that once we bring that uh, next feature in to require the auto pay enrollment, we can extend that to both recurring invoice auto pay and auto pay on the payment plans. So we're super excited to bring that to you guys too. No ETA just yet, um, but it's definitely high on our list. Yeah, it looks like that was our next question as well. Do clients have the ability to check a box or can we take control of that? You definitely, uh, the clients have to check the box like Sam said now and in the future, you can be in control. <laughs> Each step <clears throat> gets us closer. All right, so it looks like our next question here is from Joe. Can this be added to a proposal, contract, and invoice workflow, or does it have to be applied in the invoice after the fact? Great question, Joe. Um, this does not need to be applied by you. You don't have to take any action at all. That option to enroll in auto pay just shows up automatically whenever the invoice and the payment plan are eligible. So if you do a proposal contract invoice and the client gets to the invoice and there are more than there are two or more installments and each installment has a due date showing, they will be eligible and the client will just automatically see the option. You don't have to set it up. All right. So the next one, um, let's see. My thing is getting a little jumbled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. And let me, let me just 
go in and answer a quick question that everyone was asking. And I did answer that in the chat, in the chat, um, is this an option on reoccurring invoices was a very, very common question uh, that was being asked. And currently this feature is available on reoccurring invoices. Your clients can opt in to auto pay. So every time, so say you have your reoccurring invoice frequency set up to once a month, when your client goes in and let's say pays that first month's invoice, they can opt in to an auto pay enrollment. So every single month when that invoice gets generated, your client will be auto, auto charged. So that's why since that's feature, everyone got excited about that, but also wanted it on payment plans. So if you are sending one invoice and you want the installments that are on that invoice to be auto set up on auto pay, just like reoccurring invoices do, this is what that feature is for. So we already have it on reoccurring invoices and this one is just on regular invoices. So Got the best of both worlds now. <laughs> yes. And I do want to point out that some of the things we saw today only apply to the auto pay on payment plans, specifically the mm -hmm. client um, controls over changing the payment method and um, turning off auto pay on their own, the confirmation email that goes out. Those items are just for auto pay on payment plans for now. We have to do a little bit more updating to our recurring invoices before we can bring some of those options to that side of things. Um, so just to let you know what is new here and then auto pay and recurring invoices hasn't changed at all. That is still the same as before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. I'm getting all jumbled up with the questions too. Right. So let's just tackle whatever you see. Okay. We'll <laughs> all right. You see. All right. Um, Phyllis asks, do I need to set up Dubsado directly to Squarespace or do I need to have something like Zapier to connect with, to Squarespace? Um, Phyllis, maybe your question is related to Square the um, payment processor. So this feature requires you to have Stripe or Square the payment processor connected to Dubsado. And you'll find that in your receive money settings um, in your brand. And just make sure you have one of those payment processors connected. If you do have other questions about Squarespace and using Dubsado with that, you can always write into our chat support. They're happy to help. Cool, cool. So Mary asked, is this auto pay feature now a default offering or do I have to turn it on in settings from here on out? It is a default offering from here on out. So it will be on all eligible invoices. So if you have, like Sam said, anything with TBD, something that doesn't have a set specific date, that option won't appear for them. But if you have set dates on your payment plans and your installments, it will automatically be there so they can opt into that. We thought, why not get paid on time? So <laughs> no one, it's a, it's always good to get your, your money on time. So your clients can opt into that and uh, get pay, pay you on time. Absolutely. All right. So Karen asks, how can a client update their card information if needed? Um, and that is just done on the invoice. So once the client has enrolled in auto pay, they can go back to their invoice and just click change payment method right on the invoice. Um, you can go back and replay the demo to see where that is. Mm -hmm. um, and the that's really also why we're including the invoice link in the confirmation enrollment email when the client sets up auto pay so that they always have that link back to the invoice to make those changes. Cool. Cool. All right. Auto pay is per invoice and not per project. Correct. That is correct. It is per invoice yes. and not per project. So you can have uh, a client that has three different invoices and they're only opt into auto pay on two of those three. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, Richard asks, are the auto pay email templates relevant to recurring invoices or only the one-time invoices? This is a great question. Um, 
One of them is shared between auto pay on payment plans and recurring invoices, and that is the auto pay failed email. And that one has already existed for the auto pay on recurring invoices. And we just piggybacked onto that one for auto pay on payment plans. So if there is an auto pay failure because the card has expired or insufficient funds, um, that email will send in both situations. Uh, the other two emails for auto pay canceled and enrollment confirmed are just for the payment plan auto pay. Yeah. All right. How soon will this be available to us? Great question. This is something that we are going to be releasing to our, our certified Dubsado specialists and 10% of our user base by the end of today. And we will gradually increase that percentage as the week. Uh, it depends on how uh, how today goes, but it's usually our, our rollouts for big features are done this way. And it usually takes sometimes under two weeks to get that completely rolled out, out to everyone. So very, very soon you will have this feature in your account. But if you're a certified specialist or within that random 10%, it's not a set 10%, it's very random and we choose different ones every time. Um, so you will be the first to get it today if you're a lucky one. <laughs> Woohoo, excited. Um, great, let's see. Let's find some other questions here. We have lots with BH, Sam. Lots with what? Lots asking if it works with uh, ACH. Oh, ACH, okay. <laughs> Good question. Uh, no, it does not work with ACH, only credit card payments at this time. Um, so when the client is presented with that payment modal, they do have to choose pay with card. Um, another great question here from Andrea. Can the client enroll in auto pay after they have already made payments on the invoice? Yes, they can, as long as the invoice is still eligible. So we still have to have at least two or more remaining unpaid installments for them to see that auto pay option. Um, but yeah, absolutely. If they've already started it and they come back, they would see that option if it's eligible. Yeah. Does auto pay turn off if you reduce the final cost of the project? So any updates that you do to the invoice total or the line items of the amount on the invoice, yes, it will kick it out of that auto pay. So this is meant for just very straightforward, nothing happening or changing on that invoice. Um, so it will let the client know if they are kicked out of that auto pay. So if they did want to opt back in, so it's not the end of the world if you did need to go in and make edits. I know we're saying it kicks them, it, it, it drops it off, it stops it, but they can always opt back in. So maybe if you do need to change something, you can set up that communication with your client, like, hey, I'm going in reducing the price. If you'd like to opt into auto pay again, you can always opt in and let them know that. So they can always re-enroll, but if you make any edits to the total, yes, it will take them out. Yes. Great tip, Becca, on communicating with the client yes. around these changes. That's um, a really great thing to do for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, Jennifer has a great question about payment reminders. Will a notification be sent prior to each payment to the client, like a reminder that it is happening? Or will you have to set it up manually? And Jennifer, we leave this up to you so you can customize it based on your needs. So you can absolutely use payment reminders in your payment plan to accomplish this. You can have the payment reminder go out a couple of days before the due date. And one thing I do want to note is the payments will be um, automatically uh, charged on the payment due date, but you can't control the time of day that that is happening. It just, it will happen on the, on the due date. Um, so because of that, we do recommend to maybe avoid sending a reminder on the date of payment unless you word it, you know, to say, oh, your, you know, payment will go through today. So just uh, be mindful of that a little bit, but absolutely you can set up those reminders uh, on whatever schedule you want to let the client know charges are coming. I know that's always appreciated. Definitely. This person says, very exciting. Do you have a canned email that we can customize to notify our clients how to use this feature? We don't have a canned email to make your clients aware on how to use it. This is although something that's very similar to, uh, I know that 
what is it? Shopify allows you to save a card. Um, it is like Sam show, just a very simple toggle and the emails that are sent to them when they do set up auto pay, we already have those set up to you uh, for you that communicate when they're getting charged in what increments, what day, how much. So they will see that communication and it will be made very clear there. We also made it very clear on the invoice and worked a lot with our UI UX designers to make this as simple and easy as possible for your clients to use. So it should be very easy. I don't know if you wanted to maybe make part of your welcome guide that you do have this cool feature where if you didn't, if you wanted to set it and forget it, make it like a fun feature for them. Like you did this for them so that they can, just set it and forget it. And that would that might be something good to add into your, your welcome guide or something that you do to onboard them. Absolutely. Let's see another question here for the deposit. I have it set up as due after they sign the contract. Will it now need a date or does that automatically add the current date? Um, great question. As soon as the client signs the contract, the date will fill in for you. So the date will fill in based on when the contract was signed. And uh, that's all you need, really. You don't have to change it. You just have to make sure that the client is getting to the invoice after they've signed the contract. So if you have a proposal contract invoice, perfect. Uh, if you're not doing that, just send the invoice after they've already signed the contract and that date will be filled in for you. All right. Next question. We will, will we be notified if if the payment isn't processed using auto pay? Yes, you will get an auto pay failed email sent to you um, if your client doesn't pay or if something get kicks, kicks out. We made it very clear if anything gets out of the normal thing that you expect. Yes. So you'll always get a notification if the client cancels their auto pay. Um, and like Becca said, if it fails the failure email, that one you can control how you want to get that notification in your notification settings. Uh, related to this, I also saw a question about, are you notified when someone enrolls in auto pay? Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a separate email for that. It's the same as when a client makes a payment. So you're still always notified mm -hmm. anytime a client makes a payment. I was just on that question and then my chat box moved. So if we run onto it, you can mark it as answered. Okay. I'm uh, not marking them anymore, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I've been trying to go through and, and, and grabbing them. So I got okay, you covered. Good. Don't worry, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. All um, right. Um, and let's see. So will you be, uh, will we be alerted as soon as the feature is live in your account? So that's something that we announce it when we do these rolling rollouts, we usually announce it right when we do that, like first 10%. And then we just suggest to keep refreshing in your account every, every few days um, when it lands into your account. Like we said, it's completely random on, on who gets it at that time and it rolls out. So um, we just recommend keep refreshing how you know if it's in your account. A few little giveaways are just looking at your can email template section and seeing those extra emails in there. Um, that's one good indicator. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Great. Um, does this work for invoices created in a workflow? Yes, it does. Again, as long as it's eligible um, and it's a one-time invoice with a payment plan, doesn't matter how it got created, it will work. Is this feature something that we can share on social media with our clients? Of course, like I said, this is like, <laughs> this is something that you can say you set up for your clients to make it a more easier experience for them. So by all means, uh, take the credit for it <laughs> and share away uh, on that. So that's, that's a cool offering for your clients. Yes, absolutely. Um, another great question here, is there an easy way to turn it off if a client cancels? Um, you know, it would be great if the client could go to the invoice and, and turn it off themselves. However, you do have access to the client view of the invoice. So if you run into that situation, uh, you would be able to turn off the auto pay from the client's view of the invoice. Uh, they would get an email notification to that effect though. So um, we hope nothing, you know, we hope you don't run into that situation, but it is always good to have a backup plan if it comes up. Mm -hmm. 
This person asked, are we able to customize the emails that get sent on our behalf for this feature or create a canned email to be sent? So yes, the, the emails that Sam mentioned that we have going out for failure or a successful, uh, like successful auto pay setup, all of those are already created and we have that put those in the can emails template section and you can customize those. However, we strongly recommend that you stay within those parameters that we have set. There are certain smart fields that you can't delete, so you can't just completely change the theme of the email. So as long as you stay relevant, keep certain smart fields in there, um, but you can customize the wording. If you want to add more smart fields or something else, you can do that definitely. Great. Yeah, I'm seeing a couple of questions um, mm -hmm. about other uh payment due dates, like, you know, uh, not setting fixed payment due dates or um, using the project start date for setting payment due dates. Yes, you can still continue doing all of that. Um, just remember, if it's a relative due date, just make sure it's filling in before the client gets the invoice. So if you've got installments based on a project due date, just make sure the project due date is set up so that is showing on the invoice before you send it off. All right, we have someone asking, why isn't this feature compatible compatible with QuickBooks? Right now, we don't connect with QuickBooks for payment processing, and that's what we're using to set up auto pay. Uh, PayPal does not make it easy on us, so that's currently why we're not doing PayPal for this. This is why we do Stripe and Square, although we know there are other people that cannot use Stripe and Square, and PayPal is the only option. So we are looking into other ways in the future to uh, include some of those other countries that can't use that. But in terms of QuickBooks, we just simply don't use them for payment processing at this time. So that's why it doesn't work with QuickBooks. Right. But if you have QuickBooks connected to Dubsado for bookkeeping, not for payment processing, um, you know, any transactions will still sync right over there, just like any other invoice. Exactly. Okay. Um, Here's a question sometimes we get about recurring invoices. Can you set up a discount if they are on auto pay? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, as long as you have the discount applied to the invoice before auto pay gets turned on. So that would be another um, action that would change the balance on the invoice, adding a discount after the fact. So that would turn auto pay off if they were already enrolled. But yes, you can put a discount on that invoice and still have them enroll in auto pay. Um, we don't have that on recurring invoices because it's just the recurring invoice makes the same invoice each and every time. So mm -hmm. this one is a little different and gives you flexibility there. This is a good question. Does this work if they click the bottom pay now button mm -hmm. on the invoice? No, it does not. This feature only works if they click the pay now on the installment, um, on whatever installment they can, they can, as long as it's the next succession one, uh, correct, Sam? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure they go in order, which I, I'd hope so. But yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, it, they can only do that on the payment plan installment pay now. That's right. Um, I've seen a few questions like this, like, will it work with a UK credit card? Will it work yes. with a debit card? Um, yes, as long as the, the card is able to be put in, you know, when they're paying through Stripe and Square, I believe debit cards are, are also accepted uh, through there. So as long as they can put that card in, um, you should be you should be good to go. Yeah. As long as there are numbers you can type in that aren't from a check. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Yes. laughs> um, does this work for invoices that are created in a workflow? Yes, if the invoice hits all of those eligibility requirements and not having a TBD date, it will work for an invoice that is generated in a workflow if there's a payment plan on it. Yeah. Um, are there any plans to allow clients to select from multiple payment plans on a proposal and then have auto pay? So we know that's another uh, great feature to allow the client to select their payment plan. That is currently not something that we have. Um, we definitely hope to introduce that in the future, but for now you would continue to have to have uh, just the one payment plan set up for them. Exactly. All right. Um, sorry, I was just going through. Sam, I was in the chat. So if you want to answer another one. Okay. I'm getting back to it. I'm just making sure that both are handled. <laughs> 
Okay. I'm just scrolling through, seeing a few that ah, I... I'll grab one. Okay. There if they turn it off, can they turn it back on? Yes. So if, like I said, if something gets kicked off or the invoice total gets changed, as long as they still, uh, the invoice is still eligible and hits those eligibility requirements, they can opt back into auto pay. Yes. Um, another great question. What happens when a payment in the installment plan is not successful or the card is declined? Um, does the canned email include a link to repay? Yes, it does. So the, the canned email currently for auto pay failed that would send out to the client that does have the invoice link smart field in there. We really recommend that you keep it there so that the client has a way to go back to the invoice. And just like Becca was saying, if they canceled, same thing if they um, had a failed payment, they can re-enroll in auto pay as long as the rest of the invoice is still eligible. Um, so the one area that they could get into trouble is if they missed two payments mm -hmm. and now two payments were overdue. At that point, the client would not be able to re-enroll themselves. You would have to do some adjusting on the uh, payment due dates to you know, get them started up again. But um, if there's only one overdue payment, they can pay that and re-enroll and auto pay at the same time. I hope you all are liking that we're answering all these questions. I feel like there's so much valuable information being put in here and answering really good questions. And it also, your questions help us as we develop out like, our help articles and stuff like that uh, and adding to that, adding to what we, we've already done on that. So this is exciting and I hope you're getting a lot out of it too. Uh, next question, are there any plans on the roadmap to expand the payment gateways that are currently being accepted uh, to facilitate non-US and Canadian companies? So right now with our Stripe Square and PayPal, those do hit other countries and Canadian countries as well. However, in 2022, we will be looking into expanding uh, payment some some payment gateways. I cannot give any details onto what that entails just yet, but we do have some uh, some things planned around that. Yeah. Can a client choose to make an additional payment on top of the auto pay? Yes, they can. So they could go back to the invoice and make another payment. They won't get charged again for that payment. It'll be counted as paid um, and they could keep going. So if they want to pay something early, they absolutely can. So if a payment plan is based on a project date and the project date shifts, but the balance remains the same, is auto pay affected? Yes, it is. If anything that will disrupt what the client initially opted into, whether it be the date or the payment, that will kick it out of auto pay. And you will be alerted if that happens. If you change the project date, you'll see that little pop up saying, are you, wanting, are you sure you would like to do this? We do this so it's extremely and abundantly clear for your client that they know what they're getting into. There's no surprises. We don't want to get you in trouble. So we set up these parameters so that you do not get in trouble with your clients and do things that maybe you shouldn't do or aren't allowed to do. So we're trying to cover your back as well as your clients. And we're always keeping those two things in mind. Absolutely. Oh, let's see. I'm seeing a lot of questions that we have answered. Um, how can we send messages for successful auto payments like a receipt? Uh, we don't currently have um, something set up right now to automatically send a receipt through Dubsado when your client makes a payment. This is something you can actually look into in your payment processor settings. Um, I know Stripe and Square have some options for having receipts uh, sent and that can, can work alongside Dubsado. Um, that's also something you could work into a workflow using the um, payment plan installment paid um, trigger, or yes, that's a trigger uh, that you could use in that situation. So uh, the only one they would get is when they you know, do their first payment and enroll in auto pay, they get that confirmation email at that time. Yes, exactly. All right. Is there availability to send reminder to a client if they haven't clicked on auto pay yet. So just if they haven't, they have it available. Um, honestly, this sounds like a really cool feature for the future. And if, if it's a possibility and if you want to turn on something like that, um, that's something 
for us to, to keep in mind for future workflow updates or something uh, with on an invoice. Yeah. It also sounds like you might like the required auto pay enrollment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it looks like a lot of people are going to be excited for that. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, let's see. Can we customize payment reminders based on auto pay enrollment status? Um, no, not based on auto pay enrollment status. So you would want to set up the reminders, um, you know, just being mindful if you think clients may be enrolling in this, if your invoices kind of match this criteria. Um, like I said, some tips for that would be maybe including some text in your reminder saying if you've set up auto pay, you know, don't worry about it. Or, um, you know, that could be a good way to remind them just a little nugget in there saying if you did set up auto pay, this will charge automatically for you. And also um, just being mindful about reminders that would send on the due date because they might mm -hmm. get the reminder on the due date and also get charged on the due date as well. So um, just a few things to think about, but nothing really changes with your payment reminders um, other than that. CJ, I saw that you asked this question a few times, so I want to make sure I get to it. It's not lost. There's just a lot of questions. <laughs> um, so if a client amends a project for more work and I add another invoice, will that invoice uh, continue the auto pay? No, it will not. This, this auto pay is only set up not per project. It's set up per invoice. So if you do create another invoice for that client, even if it's on the same project, they will need to re-opt into that, that auto pay for that specific invoice. Yeah. Good question here. Will the auto pay automatically retry if it fails? Mm -hmm. um, no, it will not. So if the auto pay does fail due to the client's credit card being expired or um, not able to be charged, uh, auto pay will turn off for the invoice and that email will go out to the client, letting them know that it failed. And then they can follow through what we talked about before going back to the invoice and making their payment to re-enroll with a different card. All right, any idea how long until this the feature of requiring auto pay will be available? We don't have an exact ETA on when this is available. We don't net, usually give out exact ETAs uh, unless we have like this webinar event where we know exactly because the feature is done. Um, but we do have a roadmap of our features that are coming. We don't give exact dates or quarters or anything, but you'll know what we are working on. And if you go into our help center on Dubs Auto and just type in uh, new features or updates to Dubs Auto or whatever, it will be in our, our help center and you'll be able to see a link to our roadmap. Uh, that's not everything that is on there, but you can see a gist of like what we're working on now and what's what's been happening and what has happened. So you'll get a clearer picture, but we don't have exact ETAs on items. That is right. Let's see. Um, I'm going back up the list. I'm not seeing mm -hmm. any new questions. What about you, Becca? I, I hope that we covered a gist of the overall ar arching thing of what auto pay, auto pay is. Um, just to quickly recap and cover some very uh, common questions that we got asked, and I'm still seeing a few. Um, this is already something that is available on your reoccurring invoices. So this is something that you can send a reoccurring invoice and say it's once a month. They can opt into every time that invoice gets sent and a new invoice is created on that reoccurring invoice they can opt into that auto pay. This is just a feature that we added to the invoice itself and on those specific installments. So this is something that is now covering all types of reoccurring and normal invoices if it's eligible. So it's it's very ex exciting stuff. And like we said, we would love to add in, in the future a way that you can force have them opt into it so that it's more kind of like a subscription for a certain amount of time um, in that auto pay, something that we don't have yet. But it is something that as we're developing out this feature that we're like, got to do that. We know the people are going to want that. You got to do what the people want. <laughs> So mm -hmm. we're always keeping that in mind. And 
uh, Sam and I do always have our ear to the ground. We are both in the Facebook community where Sam reads through every single ticket that gets sent with a feature request. So, so much, like I said at the very beginning, so much time and love gets put into everything. Yes, our customer support will say, great, we'll let our team know. That isn't just a blanket statement. That is literally someone's it gets sent to our product team and that is someone's eyeballs reading it and adding it to the board or playing it out. Maybe if it's not even for this year, planning it out for our, our, our future features in the next year. So ton of time and love gets put into these things. Even if I know like so many people were saying, I've been waiting on auto pay for years. Yay. So have we. <laughs> and <laughs> in Dubsado, there are certain things that need to be set up before we do certain features. As much as Sam and I want to get in there and just like release everything to the world, there's a process. And um, we do have some really exciting things going and, and we appreciate everyone's support and we appreciate everyone's feedback because it's from this feedback and from you all sending in us, us emails about feature requests is why we develop features, why we might shift a timeline or, or do things like that. So we're listening to you all. We hear you and we get really excited for these things. Um, so we're excited to share this with you. And like we said, this feature is going to be launching to our certified specialists today, as well as 10% of our user base. So that those would be the first percentage of people to get it. And then over the next few weeks, or it could be within the next two weeks, Everyone will have this feature. Just keep refreshing in your account and you'll be able to, to see this. And of course, if there's any questions that come up about this feature, chat into our customer support. We will have help articles going live later today. So you will be able to, even if you don't have the feature in your account, you'll be able to read up on it. You'll be able to rewatch this webinar. I know Sam's seven minute demo that she had in there was jam packed with information. So this is a very, very simple feature with little tiny facets and caveats of eligibility and everything. And once you understand those, you'll be confident to move on and uh, have your clients do this. There's no setting up of this feature. There's nothing that you need to do. It is just once it's live in your account, you'll just start automatically receiving money. And that's the, that's the hope <laughs> that we have for I, you. Yeah. Very, very exciting. Yep. We'll get those help articles up later today. You'll have the recording mm -hmm. to watch and, um, just help you get even more excited before the future lands in your account. Exactly. And you know what, Sam? I would love to just answer all of these questions all day long, but I also want to be respectful of everyone's time. So yeah. I sincerely apologize if we did. I know because there are some that we did miss. And yeah. if we did, please comment. Um, this will also be in our Facebook group comment there and uh, answer, ask a question. And both Sam and I will be in there and we'll, we'll be happy to answer those or send a ticket in to our customer success. Uh, like I said, we would love to cover it all, but I know you guys got, got money to make, things to do, <laughs> workflows to set up, <laughs> all that fun stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. So we'll yes. be helping out in the, the Facebook comments and really hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. This was a great way to start the day, wasn't it, Becca? Yes, it was. <laughs> and a great way to end the new year on such a fun feature. You know, yes. like this is nothing like making making money. That's always good. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining. Sam, thank you so much for providing your demo and answering questions. And thank you, everyone here who attended for all your support and all your love for Dubsado for all these years. You all are what make it what it is today. So thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you around soon. Don't forget to put your questions on Facebook. Yes. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.